नाम शिवाय ओम नाम शिवाय ओम नाम शिवाय ओम नाम शिवाय नमस्ते Well, we have completed the Vidyeshwar Sanghita of the Shiva Purana. And I'm going to take a little break from Shiva Purana and go into the Mandukya Upanishad. Because I can tell by looking at the stats and the comments that we're receiving that number 1 A lot of people think that they are too smart for Shiva Purana. <laughs> that they don't need to hear about how to worship Shiva. That they don't need to chant Shiva mantras or they don't need to do puja or offerings or give gifts. And of course, this is naive and wrong. And also from the stats it appears that people are watching or listening to the spiritual insights videos much more i mean twice as much as the readings from the shastra itself now why would you want to listen to my speculations and thoughts when you can read the original duh it should be the other way around there should be so many views on the uh, readings and very few on the commentary because what i have to say or what i have to think is nothing next to the original scriptures what does it mean it means people are lazy <laughs> they don't want to go through the whole scripture and parse it for themselves and come to their own conclusions they want somebody to give them a, the conclusions on a silver platter but you know in spiritual life it doesn't really work that way because spiritual education spiritual advancement is a top down process avaroha the logic is deductive not inductive as in western science and all that so the original sources are gold they are the real value and you should listen to them more than listen to me <laughs> what can i say you know that's any better than them the thing that makes the commentary valuable and useful is that it digests to some extent the original scriptures and give some conclusions and perspective and that's valuable but it's still nothing compared to the original now the other thing is pseudo sophisticated pseudo intellectual uh, but actually rascal people <laughs> want to skip over the worship and go direct to the meditation thinking that because there's some uh shlokas in the scripture that they take out of context which basically mean that once you realize the non-dual self then there's no more need for worship or rites or japa or any of that stuff and to a certain extent that's true once you reach jnana yoga you really don't need all the others raja yoga bhakti yoga and karma yoga for your spiritual advancement but you still need to do it why even assuming that someone has realized jnana yoga uh, which is granting a lot okay but even assuming that they have 
they don't stop eating or sleeping or going to the bathroom. In fact, they're found to engage in beneficial welfare activities for the whole world, the whole humanity, all living entities even. Look at the examples of Ramana Maharshi, for example, or Shankaracharya. Uh, they could have just sat at home in South India and taken it easy. But what did they do? No, they, they actually gave their lives for others' benefit. See, so what, why do these realized souls, who everyone agrees, have the jnana, to have the self-realization, why do they continue to engage in further activities? Why don't they just sit in a corner and shut up? See? Why don't they just stop eating and drop the body? You see? If they're truly beyond duality and there is no need for any kind of engagement with the material world, well, why bother? And the answer is that even if you become fully enlightened, you still have the prarabdha karma. You still have the karma that applies to this body, this lifetime. The other stores of karma, the sanchari karma from past lives and the kriyamana karma that is stored up for future lives, that goes away, that disappears, that's gone because you're not coming back. But the prarabdha karma remains, and one must follow through on that. And so, the quality of life in the present body is strongly enhanced by performance of karma and bhakti yoga. That's why we see even Ramana Maharshi used to participate in worship of Shiva in the Tiruvannamalai temple, Ramanashramam. And that worship is going on to the present day. So why is it that these great souls, huh, if they're truly beyond everything, they don't drop karma and bhakti yoga? But yet, those who claim to be their followers and to be so sophisticated and enlightened and whatnot, they say, oh, there's no more need for those silly rituals. No more need for those irrelevant scriptures. They're all not, not applicable to our enlightened state. Huh? Well, I think that that is what New Yorkers call a bunch of hot air. <laughs> and it's a bunch of hot air. And that's being kind. What really it is, it's bullshit. It's a pose. They're pretending to be enlightened. And using that as an excuse not to do the worship, not to do bhakti, not to do karma yoga. And they're resting on their laurels they're resting on the good karma that they may have generated in a previous life that gave them the birth in an affluent society and, and gave them enough uh, material assets and sense gratification that they can pretend to be happy and enlightened and all that stuff. But it's just pretentious. It's just a pose. So we're going to go... Uh, deeper into Shiva Tantra, or Shiva Purana, <laughs> and Shiva Tantra. And before we do that, we're going to go into the Mandukya Upanishad, which explains these things. See? And it also explains why, without a great stock of pious activities and subha karma, good karma, from performance of karma yoga and bhakti yoga, you can't have enlightenment. You can't attain anything in meditation. Huh? 
get real. So this should be a lesson to all the uh, neo Adwaitans on this channel. And I know you're out there because I read your comments and I delete a lot of them. <laughs> but we should follow the scriptures. And the good reason for following the scriptures is that they're unbiased. They're written by people a long time ago, recorded from the information that they're inspired by from directly from Brahman, directly from Shiva. So they know what they're talking about. They're experienced. They're unbiased. They're not trying to pretend anything. They're living in the forest as renunciants, as sannyasis. They don't care for any of the fame or adulation or approval even of society. So they have no reason to pretend. They have no reason to put on any kind of uh, in image or any, th any kind, you know, they didn't have social media back then. Huh? So it's not like they could go on Instagram and pretend to be enlightened. That's a, a sickness specific to this internet age. Just like the people who have miserable lives, but they go on stage or they go on online and they pretend to be happy. Look, we know about this. <laughs> I used to be a professional musician, okay? I hung out with the Grateful Dead and Janis Joplin and people like that and other ja people in the jazz scene and so on. At least, you know, the people in the jazz scene, they come out of a blues background, a lot of them. And they're not afraid to admit that they're suffering. But the white rock and rollers, man, they put on this front that, oh, I'm so cool, I'm so happy, I'm just celebrating life, blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, in, the, in their background, in their personal lives, they're miserable. They're shooting up dope and they're hanging out with all kinds of rascal people who are exploiting them. I know, I've seen it firsthand. I've been there. I know how they take off their real face and put on a, a total mask when they go on stage. I've seen it. I've done it myself. So I know that you're just an act. I know that this neo Adwaita stuff, you know, that's like Papaji and Muji and all these people who are trashing Ramana's teaching. Huh? I know what they're up to. They're just after fame and adulation, thinking that will make them happy. But all it does is it makes their life so complicated and with so many problems that they forget the actual teaching, and so the teaching becomes degraded. This happened with Buddha's teaching too. The same thing. As soon as it became popular, it became degraded. And this is the way of the world. I understand that. You know, I've seen it go on, and I've done the research to see that it's gone on in the past with every teaching. I saw firsthand how Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON was degraded and trashed by unenlightened leaders hungry for power and money and attention. I've seen it up close firsthand. So don't tell me that you can become enlightened without being strong in karma and bhakti yoga. It's not possible. You know, you may have some good karma from previous lives and you're, you're banking on that to get you through. Well, guess what? It's not going to work. It's not going to work because it's against the teaching of the scriptures. You don't think Shiva knows this? You don't think that the higher authorities see what's going on, they know you better than you know yourself. They know what you need, and they know what you want. And so to ask them for anything is just a pretentious nonsense. You know, like when I read the 
the, those famous prayers, the Sri Rudra prayers. What's the first thing they ask in the Namakam section? Please put down your weapons, Shiva. Put down your weapons. That means he was holding them ready to attack them. And what are Shiva's weapons? Bad karma, delays, disappointments, sickness, enemies. You know, all the things that we associate with like Saturn in astrology and so on, and Rahu and Ketu. Because these are the planets of Shiva, Rudra especially. Rudra burns the universe to a crisp, to ashes at the end. And when we, when we put these ashes on, we say that mantra, earth is ashes, water is ashes, fire is ashes, everything is ashes, ultimately. So they're begging him, oh, please put down your weapons, because they're rascals, and he's going to attack them. And then they praise him. Oh, you're so great. You're this, you're that. And then in the Chamakam section, they ask for this whole laundry list of benedictions. <laughs> give me this. Give me that. Give me this other thing. Give me so much. There. Give me everything. Literally, they ask for everything. So <laughs> this is actually an insult to God. Don't you think God knows what we need? what we're thinking, what's in our hearts. So if we're rascal, if we're cheaters, asking him to put down his weapons is just futile. Huh? It's just PR. Come on, people. Let's get real. Let's get honest. Let's get right with the scriptures and find out the real teaching and follow that to the end. Aung Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum Aum Namah Shivaya